Hello, I'm Bishop Ricky Holmes, and welcome to our broadcast. The title Son of God is one of the most common titles applied to Jesus Christ throughout New Testament scripture. Those who vehemently reject the deity of Jesus Christ are often less hesitant to embrace his sonship. Choosing what they believe to be the lesser of two evils, opponents of Christianity mistakenly assume that the title Son of God is a description of inferiority. Such a conclusion is not only erroneous, it flies in the face of reason. A child always shares the nature of his parents. I was in my wife's bedroom when our oldest son was born. I remember gently taking him into my arms and holding him while giving thanks to God for the birth of a healthy baby boy. Though small in stature and positionally inferior to his parents, the two of us were equal in nature. It was not his pedigree, but his birth that made him my equal. Ricky Holmes Jr. came into this world without fame or riches. His only possession was his humanity and the totality of attributes that accompanied it. The same must be true of Jesus Christ. By recognizing Christ as the Son of God, skeptics are inadvertently acknowledging his deity. For you see, Christ cannot be the Son of God without also being God. As the Son of God, Jesus Christ shares the very nature of God, and thus he possesses every attribute characteristic of deity. For this reason, the Apostle Paul described Jesus Christ as the one in whom the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form, Colossians 2 and 9. The science of DNA gained much popularity over the past few years. Uh, every person has a unique genetic code known as DNA. Now, DNA is a nucleic acid molecule in the form of a twisted double helix that carries genetic information. Consequently, DNA can be used as a genetic fingerprint to identify a person. Through DNA testing, criminals have been convicted and the falsely accused have been exonerated. Scientists can extract DNA from a drop of blood or a sample of saliva and use it to determine both paternity and identity. Now, with all of this controversy centering around the identity of Jesus Christ, it would be great if the science of DNA could be used to settle the debate once and for all. All we would need is a sample of divine DNA and compare that DNA with that of Jesus Christ. If there is a DNA match, then the divine sonship of Christ is proven and the debate over his identity is forever settled. Now, surprisingly, such a test is not as impossible as one would think. Because all of Scripture is God-breathed and because Jesus Christ is the Word of God made flesh, the Bible is a rich source of divine DNA. All we need to do is extract a sample of DNA from Scripture and then compare that DNA with a sample with the nature and attributes of Jesus Christ. If their DNA profile matches, then we have irrefutable evidence that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and thus God himself. Now, to identify individuals, forensic scientists scan about 10 DNA regions that vary from person to person, and they use that data to create a DNA profile of that individual, sometimes called a DNA fingerprint. Following that same practice, we will look at a few perfections of God and we will compare those perfections with that of Jesus Christ. If the perfections of Jesus Christ match, then we know that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. We're going to look at just a few of these DNA samples. We call them divine nature and attributes. 
And while there are certain attributes of God that he has kept hidden, possibly because they are unknowable, even to the angels themselves, there are those perfections of God which he has chosen to reveal through his written word. These attributes fall under two categories, absolute and relative. The absolute attributes of God reveals who God is in relation to himself, while his relative attributes reveal who God is in relation to time and space. We will first consider some of the absolute attributes of God. Holiness. Holiness is God's primary attribute. All that God is stems from his divine holiness. The holiness of God may be defined as that attribute of God which sets him apart from all created things. God is unique. There is none like him. He stands alone in infinite majesty. Just as pure white light is the union of all the colors of the spectrum, God's holiness is the union of all his divine attributes. God is transcendently holy. God stands in infinite majesty above all creation. There is none like God. He is in a class all by himself. He exists simply because he chooses to, and there is nothing outside himself required to sustain him. His strength is without limit. His days are without end. His love is without measure. And while man may boast of his accomplishments, only God can boast of his omnipotence. Only God can hold back the movements of the stars, order the changing of the seasons, and guide the constellations. While man may boast of his intellect, God alone can boast of his omniscience. Only God knows where light comes from, where darkness rests, and where the gates of death are located. Only God knows where hell is made and stored, reserved for the day of trouble and judgment. God is better than our best and greater than our greatest. Our God is transcendently holy. God is ethically holy. Not only does God transcend all of creation, God is also ethically superior to creation. Uh, God does not conform to a standard of righteousness. He is the standard. Now, because holiness is God's primary attribute, Jesus Christ would also have to be holy if, in fact, he is the son of the living God. If we were therefore to take a syringe of truth, insert it into the living tissue of God's written word, extract from it samples of Christ's DNA, divine nature, and attributes, and compare Christ's DNA with the known fingerprint of God, we find a match. Both the Father and the Son share the same intrinsic holiness. An unclean spirit, Acknowledge Christ as the Holy One of God in Matthew 1, 24. The angel of the Lord described Christ as the Holy Son of God in Luke 1, 35. In his sermon to the crowd at Pentecost, Peter acknowledged Christ as the Holy One of God in Acts 2, 27. In a sermon to a crowd gathered in the temple, Peter again referred to Christ as the Holy One in Acts 3, 14. Throughout scripture, people, places, and things are frequently described as being holy. This holiness, however, is solely based upon their relationship to God. As Christians, we are said to be holy because we are children of God. Angels are declared holy because they are servants of God. Places, objects, and even days are declared holy when they are set apart for the service of God. Thus, people and objects are made holy as they are drawn into a relationship with the Holy God. The holiness of Christ, however, is not based upon a relationship with God. Jesus Christ is neither made holy nor simply declared holy. 
He is intrinsically holy. This means that he is holy by nature, independent of relationship or decree. Well, that's all we have time for at this time. But join us next time as we continue our study into Christ as the Son of God. Until next time, remember, sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that lies within you with meekness.